Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and uh, welcome to another session of DPA Response. Uh, this is my humanitarian effort to uh, talk to you guys, uh, the supporters of this channel, uh, because uh, it's impossible to reply 500 over comments. So I have to use certain way to talk to you guys. And um, so I use this uh, sort newest first or top comments first so i will be using top comments first uh because it's not fair to the, the people who comment earlier to if i use the newest first and um and if your comment is not uh being responded um it's not my fault youtube chose who are the top comments so uh, I know some of you guys are uh, say that uh, I'm being biased I'm not addressing those negative comments but I cannot address them if they don't appear and I'm not going to go through all 500 comments it's not possible okay just by reading it, it will take me two three hours R responding it will take me three four hours so it's not possible to do it so I have to do this so we'll stick it within uh, half an hour uh, so no let not let's not no, waste too much time uh, on this thing um i just want to you know address some of the you know points and uh i don't want to be selective about this as well so i will go through one by one this is the pin one uh that he said i'm uh dude is putting an a in asia every day soon asia this is actually wrong it's asia so the the j is actually uh shorter the a is actually longer so so yeah Anyway, I pinned it because uh, I just thought it's nice. And uh, okay, C CQ for fun. Uh, what is CQ? Close quarter combat. Anyway, uh, there's no speeding up for enlargement of territory on for the Russian side. Main focus is on the elimination of Ukrainian forces in the rear and the flank of the Russian current uh, Russian position. These are small and mobile, so perhaps sabotage group. Broken parts of the unit still active, armed and dangerous. Clean up operation in this terrain requires infantry with limited armor units i actually i'm not too sure this is referring to which position i think it is zoom right i i, I um elimination of force in the rear and flank of current russian position i actually have no idea like seriously um it, it doesn't sound like any front i know of because uh the the Ukrainians know very well where the Russians are gonna come, so there is little every area is a front. I don't think it's a rear or flank. Uh, but I'm wrong. Maybe you're right. Oleg, uh, I'm so glad to see you growing day by day. You put a lot of work into your crop and deserve to be recognized. Thank you so much, Oleg. Uh, no, my my success and my growth is all thanks to you guys, uh, the viewers. Uh, which is why i'm doing all this uh do this doing this uh, dpa response because i want to keep you guys uh engaged we are one community if you join the discord uh channel uh you will realize that you no know, we are really a family you know of people who are you know very pragmatic logical and we are very nice but of course if you get kicked blocked from the discord uh then yeah that means you are actually not logical and not nice so um, then too bad <laughs> Uh, Eddie Prowse uh, didn't notice still seeing this video but congrats on the 10k subs beyond uh, deserve and can't wait for all future contents thank you so much Eddie um, I have actually planned um, how to plan a way to report uh, things that is happening in all around the world uh, especially, especially in the focus is supposed to be Asia and uh but i haven't have time to you know develop that thing that the way how i'm going to illustrate the news but i really have the concept and uh, hopefully we will start to see more news all around the world and i think you may find that interesting uh jelly slav jelly glory because jet slav is uh, glory right so the pincer movement has been delayed by rain the whole week has been raining a lot softening the field means you have to stick with the road and that's easier to defend even a smaller user can stop whole column could be that after a good week of sunny days the russian will go wide and stretch thinner the defense by accumulating larger and more mobile units uh, units they can explore weak points and come from behind not to not to forget the air support and once you're behind there there's just a domino effect 10 to 15 may is probably the timing for this major offense 
there are some people who's who you know who comment this is yeah you are actually not alone uh but but from what i'm seeing the russians are already making an offense especially south of Izum. and the truth is when we talk about raining we we actually really do have to look at the specific weather condition for each part of ukraine because ukraine is a very big country when it rains it doesn't rain the whole country uh only some certain parts are raining certain parts are not raining so i i i i don't know i, I mean some people actually look at this conflict in a very you know romantic terms uh for me i'm just like it's an offense it's a war you know i don't care about phase one phase two you no know, you, you rest enough you attack you know the kind of thing or you move your forces into the right position once you're ready let's let's move on so i'm i think in that kind of term so so but you may be correct but no 10 15 may is still a month uh, or at least three weeks away i think uh by the end of three i mean three weeks away i mean we can you can remember this statement i think three weeks away uh three weeks away we might already saw the fall of the entire East Army. Uh, that's my guess. Your present uh, so Delta Squared 7777. 7777. Yeah, four sevens, correct. Your presentation is almost unique in this unbiased reporting of your detailed, accurate observations, not painting everything in broadly biased strokes. Thank you. I'm looking forward to the true conclusion of the war in Mariupol, which I will only believe when the blue area of your map turned pink. Thank you so much for your trust and uh belief in me uh i also still have to you know remind everyone that uh please do not take everything i say as 100 percent truth because none of this information is because i caught someone on the ground in ukraine and then i know know something for a fact but all my inf information comes from open source information so anyone like you guys can actually go and search and find the exact same information as i do all i do was i simply uh, plot all this information on a map so if the information given to me uh, is wrong is false then my map is is wrong and this could happen because uh we are in the middle of a, the biggest information war ever uh in the history of warfare i have never seen such amount of propaganda and misinformation so uh we have to be uh so we have to all of us including myself including you the viewers uh take a pinch of salt about everything that i say because uh things can turn out very different like a lot of the ukrainian offenses uh all end up uh disappearing and uh they all end up didn't uh, happen so that's quite disturbing to me so olivia young uh one of the long time viewers great update looks like the Izium front is slowly uh, shipping up while the Mariupol phase is coming to a close. Yes, I think so too. Uh, Alex Wang, another long time viewer, I long time viewer, I think. Things take time. Uh, one can wiki better of Mosul uh, to see how long it took the collision to take a city. Uh, if I'm not wrong, Mosul take um Mosul take around one and a half month. So so in comparison, Mariupol is actually rather uh rather close, uh, rather close. And quite fast actually because uh because of the industrial area which is a bit harder to deal with andre matsud hi in the museum area the dam was destroyed two weeks ago by ukrainians to prevent a uh, russian advance all the area in the south of this dam is flooded and uh i think i have reported this before as well i mean i think it's much earlier but anyway it doesn't change anything because the russians are already far far away uh, from Izium actually uh johnnyson 76 i like the new introduction very professional in appearance smashing that like button cheers thank you so much um so you have the introduction you, you're gonna you gotta just leave with it for like sometimes because i'm a, a bit lazy to change the footages within the the foot the, the video um but it looks nice i think it looks uh it looks really exciting so i i i look i like it a lot myself as well krishna perhaps no individual missiles is uh, missile strike worth reporting uh, but Russia reported more than 800 strikes overnight, a large increase in the intensity of war. I think the 800 strikes include uh, artillery strikes and uh, air strikes as well. Uh, but however, the most important uh, missile strike is to strike the light button. Uh, Tom 
Costolius. Also, the moss was just liberated in the last few hours. Uh, correct. Yes, this is true. Uh, no, so I'm not going to read the rest because I, I have reported reported this in, uh, in the summary, uh, subsequent summary. So thank you, Tom, for the information. Uh, Rodney Agessa. Patrick Lancaster just posted an update of him being, being inside the Elish steel plant while the video of the uh, Azov guys being shot at while in the trenches were, were recorded over one week ago. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Rodney. Um, I actually, while I actually appreciate uh, Patrick Lancaster's uh, work a lot, I actually don't watch every single video that he posts because firstly, I have to, I'm too busy. Um, and second, um, he is definitely, uh, while he's reporting the truth, he's definitely on the, uh, have a bias towards the Donetsk and Lohansk Republic because he had been staying there for that for a super long time. Uh, he's seeing from the perspective of the locals over there uh, and getting oppressed by the Ukrainian side. And as well as he, he, he had a Ukrainian wife, uh, which is actually, I believe, who is Donetsk uh, or Luhansk uh, uh, citizen. So the wife is currently in Russia, um, uh, far away from uh, the 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 better better zone of uh, Donetsk and Donetsk Republic, and um, uh, but I I remember seeing the wife is actually rather pretty. So uh, I can't I can't I can't blame him. You see, he he found a pretty wife in Ukraine. So, uh, Elvis Ibrahimovich, uh, when you see a fifteen meter diameter a uh, fifteen meter diameter and a and in central 10 meter, 3 to 4 meter deep hole caused by a bomb dropped by a Russian bomber, you realize that the entrenchment can't last long as they used to. It, it's, it's already is pincer movement. Uh, Ukrainians are there, can't pull back. Cause will lose the main front while, while getting bombed, waiting for encirclement while already in it. Um, what did I reply? Uh, yeah, I, I, I replied that the tanks, the tanks, uh, if the holes are all this big, the tanks can't re really go through. Then that defeats the purpose of destroying the entrenchment. All you did is create uh, another location for them to entrench themselves. Um, there's a lot of people saying that uh, the Russians have the you know the firepower to actually you know destroy entrenchment, and entrenchment is outdated. Uh, the reality to me, to me, but of course I'm not there to watch it. Uh, <laughs> I don't really know for a fact, but you no, know, seeing the the way how the front line is moving i still think entrenchment actually uh is rather relevant so uh, i uh, but that's my own opinion i mean uh, some people really believe that uh the world war one tre uh, trench warfare is really over mass 38 great job yet again you're right about the massive encirclement and this has been predicted by other analysts as well the russians will do the encirclement like armies during world war ii did where you encircle smaller part of the large uh, force one after another in a sort of interlocking and circumvent. This way, your front line is thicker, thicker, and the logistic of the enemy is cut into smaller pieces. Yeah, yes, I agree. So uh, there is this Russian and analyst talking about. Uh, if you miss uh, this information, I, I mentioned it in, in one of the videos. Um, the Russians actually is trained to fight. Uh, in the World War Two style, a massive total war uh, kind of scenario where the battlefields are huge. Uh, great armies match uh, fight each other and that's how the Russians train so when they went to Syria uh, when they went to Syria they actually struggles to struggle to adapt uh, in the beginning because the way how they train doesn't match the way how they have to fight uh, in Syria where there's a lot of uh, civilians and and uh, the enemies uses uh, human shields as well as they are more you know guerrilla in their tactics and the enemy also do not have air force and do not have ma massive artilleries. So the, the Russians, and then of course there's a lot of IED as well. So the Russians have to learn how to fight differently against uh, in, in Syria. And they actually took the lessons from Syria to apply to their, uh, the way how they train and how to fight. And then when they, and the, this Russian analyst say that when, the, when they started fighting in Ukraine, they used the tactics they learned from Syria. And then they realized that it doesn't work. Uh, maybe uh, I'm not sure. You know how? What are they? What he exactly mean by you know the Syrian uh, way, the the way they fight in Syria. So after that, they have to take dig out all their old doctrines and manuals on how to fight uh, the in the World War Two style, and then that seems to work better. 
So, uh, I mean, that's, but of course, there's the story coming out from the, this uh, Russian analyst. I, I do not know, you know how true it is. Uh, but it does make some sense. Gerard, I have, I got a feeling they will push the Ukrainian army out, uh, but threaten flanks rather than actual encirclement. They, I think they will use their strategy bombers to crack the heavy entrenchment position and then creep forward under artillery. It's going to take a long time. Yes, I think it's going to take a long time. Uh, but I also think that, uh, I also kind of disagree on this part. I think they will definitely go for an encirclement. You want to destroy as much uh, military as possible of your enemy without you dying. So encirclement, forcing a surrender usually is the best way. Uh, that's how the Nazi uh, German uh, in World War II able to you know, route and destroy the huge Russian army. So Patrick uh, Claiborne, I assume the bridges under the Dnieper mostly haven't been destroyed. Uh, why doesn't the Russian destroy all those bridges? And wouldn't that make it extremely difficult for Ukraine to maintain any kind of position east of Dnieper for long? What am I missing? Um, there is a few theories. Uh, I wouldn't say these are realities. There's a few theories. Uh, my own theory is that the Russians want to use it. Um, there's a theory that uh, I think makes a lot of sense also. They want the Ukrainians to reinforce the East. Like, in a way, they want the Ukrainians to be, able to be able to send more military equipments to the East, send more staff, more people all the way to the Eastern Army so that they can be encircled and destroyed and achieve the demilitarization goal. Uh, that is the, you know, the, the romantic uh, assumption. Um, and uh, if you want to believe a more mild and a humanitarian side, the Russians just don't want to make the life of the civilians difficult. Because you destroy the bridge, you actually disrupt the civilian lives. So, whatever it is, uh, Thomas G. Uh, the Russians are massing artillery on Donetsk front. They don't have to push through this fortification, just pin them down there. Number two, the Russians need to probe in order to do two things. Gain uh, needed information, control enemy co ac movement and action. The Russia did not make a mistake probing Pavinkov. Quite the opposite is maneuver warfare. Uh, you must understand that fortification are a double-edged sword. The Russia is controlling the battlefield quite effectively and it will be Russia which choose where and how to strike deadly blows uh, after sufficient jabs have occurred. The Russians have the benefit of time, time to rest and refit. The Zelensky forces do not do not fall victim to defeatism merely because the Russians are not winning on your hasty schedule. Yeah, actually, actually, I actually, actually, I actually, what kind of English is that? I actually uh, totally agree with you. Um, just that uh, I really hate to be the, the guy that, you know, drive all the way to Bavinkov and die there. So, uh, I'm 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 the kind of a very conservative guy, uh, but of course uh, it's a war. People die, so but you no, know, this makes total sense. I I totally agree. Hendrikus Johans Bros von Toningen, wow, what a name! So in another video, I heard the Russians are massing troops in Izium for the offense. But even the troops they have presently in Izium bridgehead, they can push the Ukrainian forces from Donbas region. The Russians probably will gain a lot of territory in the upcoming days and weeks. Uh, perhaps um, I I have nothing against this uh, possibility or this uh, idea that this could be possible. Uh, Marco Truns. Russians are fighting a mobile warfare with air superiority, uh, not supreme, not yet pre supremacy, which they will probably probably not have mostly due to modern AA. Uh, while the Ukrainians cannot be so mobile as the Russians can. This gives Russian uh, options to change strategy in an ongoing, ongoing operation if the situation allows better opportunities. The Ukrainians uh, must prepare in advance and hope the Russians follow their presumptions. The Ukrainians would uh, actually most welcome a Donbass to Hans type of war, entrenched position and attrition, as there you need the mobility the least. Another is the Mariupol situation, which also favors the Ukrainians, which is a static position in Azovstal now. Uh, if the Ukrainians have prepared uh, ammunition-wise, they can hold for a very, very long time, holding a mass of Russian troops versus relatively small Ukrainian force. Thus, the Russians are, Russians are in a hurry to free up their troops in a, by intimidating into surrender. 
The Russians have uh, multiple options. They can probe react accordingly in one or even more directions, out of which I presume three directions. Small, so the, so he's, so Marco is uh, suggesting uh, there's three ways the Russians can fight. Small but fast game breaking from Izum north of Kramatos, not entering the city and towards Bakhmut, cutting off several Donetsk area. Uh, this is actually what I think the Russians should do. This is what I think. Uh, number two, immediate direction with uh, but with cities being to take or besiege from Izum south towards Mariupol and cutting off all fortified, fortified uh, cutting off all fortified Ukrainian positions with a lot of troops and several cities to defend. Um, number three, large encirclement from Izum west towards Dnieper at Dnipro with simultaneous push along the left bank of Dnipro river in order to cut off supplies of troops and ammunition to the whole Ukrainian army east of the river, forming a defensive river barrier. The Ukrainians don't really have the possibility of forcing the Dnieper river uh, should something like that happen. I do presume the Russians would try all these directions simultaneously and if they recognize the weakest point they would divert, divert to it. The Ukrainians are in a tough position as their troops aren't so mobile to react to all. Thus, it would be better to trap in order to lure the Russians into the strongest point by pretending it is the weakest at the beginning of the push. Uh, Marco Trun's uh, great analysis. I totally uh, agree with uh, you. And uh, although the large encirclement for me, I do not, uh, I will not actually go towards the river. Uh, I don't think they will go towards the river, but uh, because there's too, there's too many cities around along the river, but um, it could be I, I could be wrong and uh, you could be correct uh, the Russians indeed have uh, all the initiative so the the Ukrainians are going to uh, struggle a lot anti Uh since you are a foreigner you probably don't know the conflict between Ukraine and the republics have been going on for 8 years so there's a 5 to 6 meter concrete fortified uh, area around the perimeter also all the troops of Ukraine that are in Donbass are being trained by NATO. In fact, these NATO troops, or these are NATO troops. Oh, so he's assuming that some of the troops in Donbass is actually NATO troops. Knowing this, you will begin to understand why the Russians do not go on a frontal attack. They concentrate forces for flanking attacks of less fortified areas. While there's a concentration of force, artillery aviation uh, weakens the position of the Ukrainians at the same time, exhausting it, destroying warehouse with ammunition and fuel. So, I I agree with this because uh, it is very, very difficult to destroy and attack a fortified position. However, uh, I think this is weird that you assume that I'm a foreigner, so I don't know about Donbass. <laughs> so I actually replied. So I actually wrote an entire article uh, relating to DPR and LPR before the war broke down. And then and, uh, this entire article, you know, is really you knows talking about uh, uh, Donbass uh, a lot so I actually know quite a bit because why? Uh, because I watch RT I watch Russia today so uh, so while a lot of you guys this uh, or you know really don't like Russia today I actually love Russia today because they bring so much information and journalism about things that is lesser known and generally their journalism standard is actually rather high uh, the, the only problem with them is that uh, whenever there's something to do with uh, Russian interest, they they will f phrase things in a very uh, pro, uh, pro Russian way. Uh, but the things that they say are all accurate. They are all true. They are all real. So the, the Russia today do not uh, report lies as far as I understand. Um, they actually just report truth but of course they always say something you know that they don't agree and then they will give you a very uh uh use the tone of their like foreigner you know that kind of way you know, like, like like they kind of just throw throw whoever so anyway um uh anyway i i I'm just gonna like uh these comments uh thank you for the comments because but i'm gonna follow with the major ones uh not the replies Andrea Balsa, thank you as always for your verified up-to-date information. You're definitely the best source on YouTube. Thank you so much. Uh, and Andre, uh, Starov Karajorgis, 
So would you be willing to consider uh, Russian Federation and Malaysia control over Kherson, Donetsk, Luhansk and Kharkiv Oblast as the proximate and minimum accepted, acceptable goal? And also pinning the uh, uh, Ukrainian regular and National Guard forces in entrenched defensive position, putting them in a series of catch-22 dilemma. Is it still a thing for the Russian and pro-Russian forces, right? So, uh, I personally think that uh, this is... I'm not sure about Kharkiv, to be honest. But the Russians, this is this too is uh, non-negotiable. Donetsk and Luhansk uh, liberation uh, with a dog gear is... Um, non-negotiable this is the failure to liberate the two uh, people's republic will basically spell the end of russia and putin's uh, rule so putin will make sure that this is going to happen and uh from the things the from the actions of what the russians have been doing not just Kherson, south of zaporizhia will be annexed <clears throat> how are they going to annex it is it a crimean way or is it a donbass way i'm not sure but uh, Kherson and the south of Zaporizhia is definitely Russian uh, going to be Russian uh, after this war and uh, I'm just not so sure about Kharkiv because uh, despite Kharkiv being a majority Russian speaker the population there especially in the city seems to be rather very uh, seem to be rather anti-Russia so I'm not so sure about Kharkiv but the oblast there is some hints but not so sure as for uh, pinning the forces in entrenched position, I think that's exactly what they are doing because uh, they do not want them to retreat to the to the west and behind and put, defend themselves behind the Dnipro River because that will make uh, fighting even harder. I Fadi Gaming, hey bro, I just let you know, although the conflict bro bro uh, brought me to this channel, I will be a daily viewer even after the conflict ends. Hopefully sooner rather than rather than later. Thank you so much, bro. Thank you so much. Like really, um, the the by right defense politics Asia is supposed to report on Asia and Ukrainian Ukraine war is not in Asia, but um, I'm very thankful that uh you guys are here with me and I'll hopefully I can share uh news and interest to interesting way to of uh looking at uh news uh in the near future. Delta Squad 7777 again. Uh, I suspect that Russia may be holding back a bit recently. Uh, we'll be doing so and we'll be doing so for the coming week because of the occurrence of uh, Catholic Easter, Eastern Orthodox Easter, Ramadan and Passover. And okay, some people are very ro romantic. They look at dates and festivals, you know, and special occasions. Uh, very uh, like there is special significance, you know, like as if Biden is like you know like biden wanted to withdraw from afghanistan uh, on the very day of uh 9 11. um i don't think the russians are this kind of people i don't think putin is this sort of people putin is way too um way too pragmatic to care about you know all this uh significance you know all this romantic uh romanticism subtle savage uh Putin's initial address made it clear that what the special operation was going to be, denazification of uh, Ukraine, protect Luhansk and Donetsk Republic, destroy Ukraine military infrastructure. With that said, the obvious encirclement of the Ukraine forces in Donbass doesn't preclude uh, other eventual ambitions, but it is a key priority. Actually, this is wrong, you know. It's not destroy uh, Ukraine military infrastructure. It's demilitarization is to destroy the Ukraine's military and its ability to defend itself or fight. So most of the Ukraine forces have been there since 2014. Many of them are far right. Uh, Eeks. I don't know what this means actually. Uh, and there has not been a mass exodus of those forces implies several things. Uh, on the simplest level, Kiev wants them to stay there knowing they will be wiped out. Frankly, this could be the secret agreement between West and uh, Moscow. As I suspect the fate of the Azov battalion in Mariupol also may have been secretly agreed upon. Ukraine will lose this war. Leaders of the state must look ahead, formulate what the new Ukraine will be composed of. Um, there is no room anymore for far right hooligans in the West and the Pentagon have been uh, and the Pentagon has been grooming uh, these hooligans. The simplest solution in dealing with these elements is have them destroyed in battle. Um 
I actually this this conspiracy I actually agree uh halfway. I don't think it's the web is it's a secret agreement between the West and Moscow. I think there might be a kind of agreement between uh Zelensky and Moscow. Um, because Zelensky have no control over the far right uh, battalions and uh, troops, and because of the political intrigue, you know the different political factions uh, within uh, Ukraine, Zelensky's hands are tied. There is he cannot uh, admit that there are uh, pro nazis in his country. Uh, neither can he destroy these neo nazis on his own. So, um, uh, leaving the Ukrainian. Uh, the the Ukrainian forces and the Azov battalion to die um, is a very real thing. So, as long as the the Eastern Army is not destroyed, Zelensky will not surrender at all. They will he will not negotiate at all. He wants all these uh, far right troops and uh, extremists to die, like for real. I'm not even joking about this. I think this is very real. But to say the West. And Moscow, I do, I disagree. The West, uh, a lot of the leaders in the West are just too blind, <laughs> to 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 into their own world, to to realize what they are doing. So, uh, but that's just my opinion. Um, you can think differently for sure. Uh oh, it's thirty one minute already. So let's do the last three. Okay, so uh, William kills killing wars. Wow, what a name! I appreciate your effort. Interesting listening to an Asian guy explaining a war in Europe in English. <laughs> I actually reply, huh? The way you put it, uh, it does sound a little peculiar. It, it sounds really weird when you put it in this way. Um, Leopoldo uh, Saugui, DBA at uh, Spivakivka, there's a bridge to cross um, Donetsk. And of course, uh, Izum, there's several bridges. There's a lot of points to cross the river Donetsk. Okay. I don't know what to reply to this. Uh, yeah, but okay. Uh, Todd, uh, Skull and Sma, Sure, F Sma. Actually, I don't know how to pronounce this word. The word is that there's 15,000 Russian troops heading south uh, into Izum. Yes, this information actually coming from pro Ukrainian sources. And in fact, I think it's, it might be actually from the, uh, the Defense Ministry of Ukraine. And also, Russia is starting to use its strategy bomber. Check out the Fab 3000 crater. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if that crater is actually created by this, but yes, they use the strategic bombers. Uh, sometimes, uh, they they did use it on Azov style. They actually use it before that. Uh, but they use it for launching missiles. Uh, let's do one more for John Chan. Uh, so, John Chan, the Russian forces will lose the advantage the more they spread further westward towards the beyond the Dnieper River and vice versa. Due to the elongated logi logistical tail, heightened risk of being outflanked, force dilution, as well as a state affinity. Uh, eastward is Russell Philo, Philo and the western west west start is uh, Russell Phobic, hence unoccupiable for long periods. This applies applies to the Ukrainian forces in reverse. Thus, the Ukrainian military leader, leadership made a strategic blunder by not retreating, and doing a long march to west Ukraine as soon as they lost air superiority. For to fight a superior force, the strategist must trade space for time. With the bulk of a Ukrainian army concentrated in the eastern Ukraine, they could lose a lot of soldiers, and more importantly, the more veteran units as well. Their real western units are likely to be less experienced. The loss due to this blunder will impact Ukraine not just in this conflict, but decades after. Um, a, a few things to break down, I think. Um, like I mentioned above uh, in that conspiracy, um, I think Zelensky wants the East Army to die, uh, or he actually don't really care about the East Army, Army anymore because even no really he he definitely know he can't win this war for sure. Uh, but I'm not sure if they if the Ukrainians actually send a lot of reinforcement to the Eastern Front. Uh, they might actually send it you know, to around Kharkiv area because they want to reduce the the amount of land the Russians will capture at a point of a uh, peace negotiation, but. Uh, the the Eastern Army seems to be forfeited, uh, largely. I this is just the, my feeling because uh, early in the war, it was uh, rumored that the Ukrainians are actually giving up on their Eastern Army. So, but anyway, this is just you no know, propaganda or misinformation, no idea. And um, so 
is is it a strategy blunder? I actually don't think so because they spent eight years building the fortification and entrenchment. You're not going to leave it. You're going to get routed like badly and destroyed on the way back. Then you'll be like the Iraqis, you know, running away on a long road and then die in the in the in the road of death. So, so anyway, uh, thank you for Delta Square seven 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 again. Uh, astonishing progress in the command of English. I, I feel insulted sub, somewhat. <laughs> and uh, Henrich Smith, thanks for the update. Appreciate uh, appreciated. Uh, so tired of, of the one-sided commentary of the pro-Russian sides. You are more honest and balanced. So thank you so much for uh, the comments. I'm not going to I'm not going to read on anymore. Uh, we are now at 35 minutes already. So thank you so much for watching this uh, um, day 52 summary uh, DPA response. And I will see you in the next update.